Hi, welcome to James Miller Lifeology, where you learn to simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. My name is James Miller. I'm a licensed psychotherapist and a composer. Thank you so much for joining with us today. Let's get started. I really wanted to take a quick second just to thank all of you who continually support and listen to James Miller Lifeology Radio. It has been such an exciting adventure for me. There are so many amazing things that are happening over here that I definitely want to share with you. So for the next few months, every person who signs up for my free newsletter will be entered into a drawing. In this monthly drawing, whomever wins will win a free 30-minute Skype call with me, James Miller. I will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. So go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and sign up for my free newsletter there. Who knows? Maybe you will be the lucky winner. So sign up today. I have a great show for you today. I'm going to help you remember your dreams. I'll also be interviewing author Cheryl Bannerman, who reviews her book, Words Never Spoken, a book of spoken word. This novel discusses relevant topics applicable to all my listeners. You'll find that you can relate with many of the characters and it will help you find the words to heal your emotional wounds. I have some exciting news. Did you know that I'm on the radio three times a week? You may hear me on the same station on Tuesdays at 1.30 p.m., Fridays at 9.30 a.m., and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. You may also hear me on iHeartRadio, as well as on all the other major podcasting platforms, such as iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and many others. Simply search for the show name, James Miller Lifeology. There once were two men who would play golf together on a weekly basis. Cal was in his late teens and showed a lot of promise in the game. The second man, Bill, was in his early 40s and was consistently able to beat his younger opponent. One day, when they were playing, Cal announced to Bill that he was going to try out for the Pro Tour in the following week. He knew that it was a long shot, but it was his dream to be a professional golfer, so he thought he should give it a try. I could have done that, was Bill's curt response. Then why didn't you? asked Cal. I don't know, I never got around to it, responded the older man. A couple of weeks later, the two men played together again. Cal looked slightly dispirited as he announced that he had missed the cut and had to wait another year to try again. However, he knew what he had to work on, so he practiced hard for the following 12 months and continued to improve, although Bill still beat him regularly. The time drew near to the next tryout for the Pro Tour. I'm having another go of it next week, said Bill. I could have done that, snorted Bill. Yeah, but you didn't, did you? muttered Cal under his breath. A couple of weeks later, the two men met again. I missed out again, said Cal. Why don't you just give up, asked Bill. Because it's my dream, and I think if I work really hard this year, I could make the cut. I could have done that, said Bill again. After years of perfecting his flaws through practice and coaching, Cal really improved over the course of the year and had another try. He met up with Bill again. I made it. I made the cut. I'm a professional golfer now, he proudly announced. Bill tried to be happy for his young friend, but all he could say was, I could have done that. As he said these words, he tried to hide a tear forming in his eye, realizing now what he had missed out on because he didn't do what he could have done. And now it was too late. Cal left to follow his dream, and they rarely saw each other again, although they did play once more, with Bill still shooting the better score. Remembering your dreams. When you were a child, I'm sure you had a lot of ideas of who you're going to be when you grew up. (laughs) Some of them may have been pretty outlandish, and as you grew up, you determined if that was a reality or not. Unfortunately, as we do grow and develop, we experience many difficult times in our life. And when those difficult times happen in our life, sometimes we forget to dream. Sometimes all those hopes and dreams that we had when we were a child die stillborn. When life happens, and it happens to all of us, it doesn't matter if you're a quote-unquote good person or quote-unquote bad person, it simply is going to happen to us. But when it does happen, it's so important for us to continue to dream, to focus on our future. And unfortunately, if we don't dream anymore, mediocrity sets in. In other words, mediocrity is settling for the status quo, settling for how your life is right now, and not developing into the next version of who you could be. When life does happen, sometimes those situations then define us. We then become the divorced person, or we become the bankrupt person, or we become the person who was laid off. When those events happen, it is so important not to identify yourself or call yourself what you went through. What you went through is simply what you went through. It's not who you are. That's why it's so important to dream. It's so necessary for you to grow and develop, because when you can think ahead in the future of who you want to be, what you want to accomplish, all those amazing things in your future, that's what gives you the tenacity. That's what gives you the encouragement. That's what gives you the hope that you can accomplish those dreams. But if you think nothing is ever going to change, that you're always going to be this way, then unfortunately, my friend, that's true. You will always be this way. The choice is yours. And I say that to not minimize what you've experienced. I say that because I want to encourage you that you can change, you can grow, you can develop. Sometimes you may actually meet people who follow through with their dreams and there's a sense of bitterness or frustration as you review your own life. It's never too late to make a change. It's never too late to accomplish your dreams. If you've forgotten what those dreams are, 
Ask the people who knew you when you were younger, or even close friends from even a few years ago, who can remind you of what you dreamed about, who can remind you of who you wanted to be. That will give you the information to accomplish all of your dreams. A dream can become a reality, but it can only become a reality is if you follow your dreams. There's so much more in you. You have not laughed your last belly laugh. You have not danced your last dance. Your life is beautiful and amazing. Focus on your future instead of your past. Did you know that I have a YouTube channel? That's actually how Lifeology started. I have well over 150 episodes that I've created specifically for you. I do know many people struggle with listening to a full 30-minute show, so these YouTube episodes are about three minutes long. Each episode teaches you one simple lesson that you can practice daily, which will help you simplify and transform your spirit, mind, and body. Simply go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel there, or go to youtube.com and search for my name, James Miller Lifeology. Author Cheryl Bannerman, a woman who has been writing eye-opening fictional stories since she was a kid, runs a 22-year-old virtual business-to-business training and development company based out of her Orlando, Florida home. She is an instructional design and e-learning specialist with a passion for developing fun and engaging courses and modules. However, today Cheryl is here to discuss with us life's harder, more emotional topics in her latest book, Words Never Spoken, a book of spoken word. This phenomenal book will give you wisdom and insight into ways to heal your own emotional wounds. Welcome to my show, Cheryl. Thank you. So glad to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you on my show today. And I'm so glad that you are also in Orlando, Florida. You're just a couple hours north of me. So it's nice to talk to a fellow, uh, I guess, Floridian. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, I'm loving it here. I moved here last year. Oh, did you really? From where? Yeah. I'm a Jersey girl. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. If my listeners know, I moved down here two years ago from Washington, <laughs> D.C. So it definitely is yeah. a different pace. <laughs> That's for yes, sure. Yes. I, I love it. Flip flops all year round. <laughs> yes. Yes. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really is true. So I can't wait to talk to you about your book. Now, but first, tell us more about your life itself. How did you become an author? Oh, my goodness. I dreamed about it since I was a little girl. Really? So um, I've just always been writing. Um, short stories and poems and songs. And I've just always dreamed of seeing my name on a book cover and just holding it in my hand. You know, it just has just always been a dream. And then when I got established with my company and I had the time, um, I took all my um, notes and, you know, throughout the years and took all my experiences and uh, decided to start putting out books. And wow. This is my second one. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. So even as a little girl, perhaps your friends were doing all these different types of things, but in your heart, that was always what you wanted to do was write. That, that's beautiful. Yeah, it was. The types of stories that you write or types of books that you write, what type of mm-hmm. genre is it? It's moved around a lot with different genres. I always consider them to be... Um, drama, Mm. you know, um, life, um, self-help, life experiences. So that's where I've always placed it. It depends on the publisher. Sometimes they put them in the category of um, adult um, women's (laughs) category. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know why, but it's, it's not just a woman's topic. Sure. You know, the topics that I cover affect men and women and young people. All across the world. Mm. And so I'm sure that at times, you know, of course, unfortunately, they have to categorize different books. So I'm sure that can be a little frustrating because you want your reach to be broader because it does impact so many different types of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that specifically with with this show, even though it's a radio show, but it's also on podcasting platforms and some of the categories I have to put it in. I'm thinking, well, it's yeah. not really that, but <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to be kind of narrowed down to something. You're like, yes. oh, it's so much more expansive than just a, a topic or yes. a category of some sort. So I can I definitely yes. can relate with you on that. <laughs> and sometimes they throw it into family and relationships and it's really just not, mm. definitely not that. Yeah. And I'm sure that's sometimes even difficult as a writer because if a book is not put in the right category, then unfortunately, well, obviously people aren't going to be able to find it, but right. when it seems out, out of sorts, then it, it doesn't fit. And so it often is an outlier. And with that, it can, you know, from a business standpoint, and this is me saying this, not you, but I'm sure it can affect sales. It can affect all these different types of things because people just don't yeah. know about it. Yeah, that's Certainly. so true. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, with when it comes to your book itself, when we talk about mm-hmm. spoken word, what does that mean? Because I've talked with people before that have that use that as a category for their poetry. But what does that mean for you? Yeah, it's you know what it's um, 
Uh, there's so many examples on YouTube if you want to, um, if anybody wants to look it up, Alicia Keys has done a spoken word, Jill Scott, Erica Badu. Um, there's so many different actors and musicians mm. that have done it live on stage. But it's really a poem that doesn't necessarily rhyme. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But it's emotional Mm. and you're actually speaking as a character um, out loud. And that's really what it's about. You are the character speaking to someone else um, and and showing emotion and getting out your thoughts and feelings. So it's Um, almost like a monologue in some way for for maybe an actor of sorts. But this is something slightly different where it's. Because it's not necessarily from a play per se, but it's kind of maybe the right. thoughts and feelings of what someone's experiencing as if they were talking to themselves or getting inside the head of that character. Yes, or speaking to that character, Ooh. maybe um, giving advice to another character or speaking um, to a specific person to maybe get out your frustrations or feelings about something. Mm. Wow, that's really powerful. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I can definitely see how that would have so much movement emotional movement for the listeners yes it's it is a very emotional and um, what i decided to do was even though it was spoken word i still made it into a chapter book mm. so it's just like a regular novel of fiction i'm um, like my first one just broken into chapters but under each chapter is an introduction and then the spoken word uh, lyrics for, be- you know, lack of a better word. <laughs> wow. And you're sure yes. I just have to say this. You have a phenomenal speaking voice. So I can only imagine if you were to do spoken word, how powerful <laughs> it would be. So I just want you to know that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are very welcome. You really are. But, you know, from a, from a, psy- a psychological standpoint, you know, we have what's called self-talk. So self-talk itself is just mm. really the thoughts that go through our head over and over again. You know, what do we tell ourselves yeah. when we're aware of it and not aware of it? But when we come from a proactive stance of, wait a minute, James, why are you thinking this? What is going on in your life which is causing you to feel this way? It doesn't yeah. mean that this is true. So I can kind of see how self-talk itself is maybe a therapeutic version of what mm-hmm. spoken word poetry or spoken word lyrics would be. Because I yeah. think it's very similar, very like a parallel process in some ways. It is. And that's, that's what it's so funny you said that because that's what my books are um, for me. They're oh, wow. therapeutic for me. Wow. Um, so um, all of my experiences, all of my family and friends experiences and all the things that I take in and hear um, and digest in life, you know, that's that's what comes out in my mm. book. So it Powerful. is therapeutic for me. That's amazing. Well, I was actually going to ask you that. What inspires you to write or what type what do you use to write as far as life itself? Um, uh, so many emotions. Um, a, a lot of people from my first book, they know that um, my daughter is special needs. Um, you know, I've been through divorce. I've been through a lot of difficult times. And so I write based on all of the people that I associate with that have experienced that with me. Mm, wow. And I put it on the paper. And it's so, like you said, it's just so therapeutic. And you're the voice for those individuals who may not be able to find that voice or be able to really contextualize or put it into maybe the syntax of what they're really experiencing. And so I, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal that you can be that, <laughs> literally that spoken word for those individuals. Yeah, I want, I want every reader to find their own journey mm-hmm. within the book. And so every book that I write, I have people tell me, you know, oh, my goodness, I went through um, something similar to this particular character. And it just meant so much to me that that character was able to um, escape that violent situation wow. and, and find peace. Wow. So it, I hear that all the time. They, they're able to find their own journey within my books. Mm, that's amazing. That, that's beautiful. What is this book specifically about? Words Never Spoken, a book of spoken word. What is the, um, the synopsis of it? The story um, is about a character of a woman and her child and the struggles that she went through uh, raising the child. Um, she then um, stepped into an abusive relationship mm. through 
through the vials of online dating. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's very relevant today. That's true. (laughs) She learned her lesson. And in the end, uh, she was able to, through her faith in Christ, walk away and begin healing. Mm. So this goes through the whole journey of the whole, the whole gamut, really. Thing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what, I could definitely see why you said earlier that it's so relevant with many people. Um, it really yeah. is because there's so many people who can be like, oh, I know about that, or I know about that, or oh, I've experienced yes. this. <laughs> there's um, there's faith, you mm-hmm. know. If there's the Christian aspect. There's mm-hmm. people that are going through depression, thoughts of suicide, mm. um, domestic violence. Uh, alcohol and drug addictions. There's so wow. a t- there's so many different social topics that you know I cover in this one. The wow. first one was a biggie, but yeah. <laughs> I can see this, <laughs> this as a lifetime a movie if you played it out. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Yeah. What was the need? You know, when you look around your community, you look around your world. Why yeah. did you feel that these topics or these themes were relevant for now, and it made sense to write it as of today? Well, all you have to do is turn on the news and (laughs) everything is sad. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just sad stories everywhere. And so many people are just sad. Um, When you go out um, to the store um, or to the market or whatever, wherever, you know, it leads you, unless you're in church, most people do not openly engage in conversation and yeah. say hello and and speak and how are you? And a lot of people are going through stuff and they're very sad. And I, I noticed that. I noticed that change. I just felt like there was a need for, um, through books, mm-hmm. you know, for people to feel like there's a plus side, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and th- there really is. And so going back to what you said before, you're giving them that hope. And I think sometimes people yes. don't even realize that they're sad. Have you found that? People don't yes. realize that their life is maybe mediocre, living in mediocrity, and yes. and they're just not that happy version of themselves that they used to be. It's it's so true. You know, I was reading some of the reviews that you have, and I'm going to actually yeah. read some of them. There is an author, Balawith Harbright. He was an author of Full Tilt Exorcist, and he says, Words never spoken is absolutely gripping from the first page to the last. Bannerman's words are spoken from the soul, harsh, raw, melodical, lyrical, and oh so honest. A must read for anyone who's been impacted by an abusive relationship or anyone who is searching for the way out. That is an amazing review. You know, because we're talking about what yeah. you, your version of it, but then to have someone else who's read it, who's also an author, who really is, can see how impactful this is. I mean, that, that's, you've got to yeah. feel pretty honored by that, that people are really walking away with a sense of healing and hope in their life. Yeah, it's, it does make me feel good. And um, another review that had just came in that I posted on the site, she says that she could feel the raw mm. pain in the words. And yeah. that just really hit me. Wow. <laughs> just, I, it really hit me. I was like, wow. Like for her to pick up on that, it's just really amazing. I'm sure it is. Your book is different than other, I suppose, novels per se, because because it is like a self-help book. Tell right. my listeners what is at the end of each chapter, which can help them maybe participate with the story as well. Sure. It's actually a journal mm. uh, with questions. So it not only asks questions related to what happened in that chapter, but it asks them to apply it to their own lives. Um, So have you ever been in this type of situation and what would you do differently? There's even a question in there about as little boys and girls, we always dream about growing up and living in a castle and running away with our fair prince or princess. Well, (laughs) so there's a question in there about, you know, when you were a kid, what did you dream of your perfect, you know, a partner would be? Um, and and what what was the reality of that, and mm. how could you change that reality? Yeah, uh, it's just a really, Powerful it's really questions. intense. <laughs> yeah, very good self reflection. Um, so it really challenges them at the end of each chapter because each chapter covers a different um, topic. So mm-hmm. one chapter might be talking about depression, another one might be domestic violence, another one might be addictions. So that's why I broke it out like that. Because uh, yeah. there's so much of it, it'd be harder to throw it all together. Yeah, like, okay, let's talk be, about it all. It would be another book at the end of the mm. book. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So how did you come up with those specific questions? Oh my goodness. Um, I really just... Um, pulled the topic that I really wanted to focus on from that chapter. Mm -hmm. And then I tried to think of the hardest question that I could ask myself. 
Yeah. Then, oh, okay. And that's how I came up with it. Yeah, those are d- really difficult questions. <laughs> but I really like, you know, for example, that question you asked about who did you dream of marrying or being with when you were a yeah. child? Because I do think it is important because so many times we forget the hopes and dreams that we had when we were younger. Sometimes yeah. we just forget about them. And you know, like I said earlier, <laughs> yes. mediocrity can set in, life stressors can set in, and we forget yes. to dream, we forget to hope, we forget to plan for our future when sometimes we're just trying to put fires out. So this type of yeah. reflection and analysis and just really saying, what is different in my life now than what I originally wanted? Yes, life happens, but it doesn't mean that we still can't hope and still dream and still wish for those things that are healthy, right, and whole for us. So that's why yeah. that's a great that you're really able to ask those hard questions or really give yes. people that time and energy to focus on that, to really ask themselves, well, why? What has changed in my life? Yes, that's right. What made you forget about those dreams? Because um, a lot of times we just settle. Mm-hmm. And, you know, me being um, recently divorced um, and on my own again, I'm learning that it's okay to be yes. single yes. with the only man in my life as God. Yes, It's That's okay. True. It's okay. As long as you're at peace, there's better things that he has in store for me. Yes. And you know, and the thing is when one chapter closes, it doesn't mean one's life is over. It just means the door, exactly. is, the door is closed. And so with yes. that, let's focus on what is today as opposed to what was yesterday. Yes, exactly. And I think that's an amazing thing because kind of reflecting on what you said earlier, sometimes people do focus on what was lost and not what is today. What is today can still be amazingly beautiful. It can be right. And there's so many things that are good about it. But if we focus on what, like I said, what was as opposed to what is today, it's going to be very hard to develop for tomorrow because we're, you know, I really love the analogy of you look, you're in a car and there's a windshield (laughs) and there's a rear view mirror. If we're continuing (laughs) looking in that rear view mirror, we're not going to see the beautiful things in front of us in that windshield. And so I think it's a really good analogy for all of us to really be mindful of that is what am I focusing on right now? What what right now is, is, is different. doesn't mean it's good or bad. It's just different. So what am I going to do with that information today? And how do I thrive in that as opposed to just exist? Absolutely. Well said. Oh, thank you. (laughs) I would not trade my peace of mind and quiet um, for anything. I, I love the place that I'm in right now. And I think that's such a powerful statement because many times people don't realize that their life is so chaotic right now, that there's so much (laughs) noise in their life. And when they don't realize it, they don't realize that their life could be so much more balanced, so much more peaceful, so much more zen, if you will, if you simply make those hard decisions. I once heard it said that the pain of discipline is temporary, but the pain of compromise is eternal. You know, and Mm. so it's so important because in this moment, yes, it may be difficult to make these changes, but the long term so much more peaceful. So you have to look yeah. at, I can deal with this right this second, as painful as this is, I'm, as I'm growing and developing. But if I don't make that change, then mediocrity is going to sit in and that's permanent. I don't want to live a life the way I'm currently living. So I'm going to make a choice to do something different. Yes, absolutely. So what's next for you as an author? What are you hoping to do next? Well, I, I'm actually finishing my third book. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> of course you are. That's, that's great, Cheryl. <laughs> so I'm, my goal is to get it out by the end of the summer. Uh-huh. Um, it, this one is the same themes, mm-hmm. um, the same social themes, but just it's a thriller. It's Ooh. actually a murder thriller. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, how exciting. Yes. So I'm branching out. I don't feel like we should put limits on anything that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't put limits on my writing. And even though people may say, oh, no, you got to do one genre and you can't jump around and this and that. But I feel like if I'm still following the same themes that could help people, Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it's okay. You know, it's okay to be me. And that's what I'm I'm learning. Um, Even in my business, I tried to for a long time, you know, I fought um, people that said, no, no. You should not bring religion, you know, into your business. And and I fought it for a long time. And then I just said, you know what? I'm just going to be me. And I just launched a whole branch of Christian training modules. And that's it's great. doing great. Oh, that's wonderful. Just like the themes in your books, 
that's so relevant to your life in the moment because people are telling you what you should or shouldn't do or be this way or be <laughs> yes. not the way. So there is that parallel process of I mean, whatever the, the characters are in your book is also re- relevant to your own life when you are navigating your own life in a different way. Yes, that's right. That's great. It's all about listening. Yes. Um, because sometimes we get messages from God and we don't listen. We yes. want to do things our way, <laughs> but we're scared of what other people will think. And it's sometimes we don't listen to that. That's yeah. not your sixth sense. That's actually God. Yes. Well, it's funny. Sometimes I, I you know, in my, as my own version of God, you know, I will often give him my best advice, my best reason for how we should do it this way, why we should do it this way. <laughs> and it doesn't come about. I'm like, God, yes. wait a minute. But I had the best advice. But my advice, obviously. <laughs> Obviously, it's very limited from who he is. So. It's, not, it's not your way, it's God's yes, way. Exactly. That's, that's actually the name of my um, the Christian division. Oh, neat. God's way. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Well, Cheryl, it's been an absolutely wonderful time talking with you today. If my listeners would like to find out more information about you, where may they find your information about you online? You can find information about me at bannermanbooks.com. That's B-A-N-N-E-R-M-A-N books.com. Awesome. Now, if my listeners would like to purchase your book, Words Never Spoken, a book of spoken word, and your first book as well, where may they purchase those books online? You can find it on Author House, which is my publishing company, okay. um, on, uh, Barnes & Noble, and Amazon. Perfect. So, Cheryl, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put your book, Words Never Spoken, a book of spoken word, on my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com. So if my listeners would like to purchase Cheryl's book, just simply go to my website. Once again, that's jamesmillerlifeology.com. Go to my store, and you can purchase Cheryl's book right there, which, which will navigate you directly to Amazon. Cheryl, thank you once again for being a guest on my show today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> I also want to thank you, my listener, for joining with me today. Please subscribe to this radio show through whichever portal you joined with me. Also, please go to my website where you may sign up for my newsletter, enroll in the Lifeology Academy, watch my YouTube episodes, and read all the articles I've written just for you. If you'd like to become a guest or advertise on my show, simply visit jamesmillerlifeology.com. You may also follow me on all social media platforms under the name James Miller Lifeology, except for Twitter, which is James M. Lifeology. Have a fantastic day, and I look forward to speaking with you very soon.